Hi everybody, uh, I'm the greatest living inventor and today we are doing my invention, a magnetic turbulence. So uh, let me write it down. Magnetic turbulence. Okay, so we had one uh, explanation. I had one explanation for turbulence, and uh, this is my second uh, invention um, explanation for turbulence, which is my invention. Okay, what kind of phenomena can we see in 3D that we cannot see in 2D? In context of magnetism and or turbulence. Okay, so we are now uh, making an analogy for the fourth di dimension. Okay, so I'll just take off my jacket. Okay, an analogy for the fourth dimension. Okay, so now we are thinking about what is there in a 3D that we cannot understand in 2D in order to understand what in reality there is in 4D that we cannot understand in 3D, okay? So everything we are talking about now is an analogy. We'll start from the analogy. Planet Earth is a 3D ball. But let's assume that we are seeing only the phenomena in 2D, okay? It's a 3D ball. But let's assume we are only seeing the, the uh, phenomena in 2D on its surface, the surface area of the sea. Uh, if there is a wave, we see that, uh, that the wave is progressing forward and backwards and sideways in circles that grow larger and larger outwards. Okay, so we have the sea. Okay, we are above the sea, and we see something like this. Then we understand that uh, it's a, a wave. If we are in the third dimension, we can see from the side uh, something like this. But from above, we can see it also. This is in two dimensions, this is in three dimensions. Uh, circles that grow larger and larger outwards. So to see and understand a wave, we don't need to understand 3D. We, what do we need to understand 3D for? For eddies. Eddies, a uh, whirlpool or vortex. Okay, if we have a whirlpool, sorry. Hi. Okay, sorry. So uh, if uh, we have uh, a whirlpool, okay, then from above it looks more or less like this. But if we could see it in, uh, we, are, we are not seeing exactly what is happening, but if we could see it uh, from the side, then we would see it, um, something significant, okay? So uh, here there is much difference. We, we actually don't see what's happening. Um, okay, so... To see and understand the wave, we don't need to understand 3D. We, 
what do we what do we need 3D for? For eddies. Eddy, whirlpool, vortex. Okay, eddy. Or a whirlpool or vortex. An eddy is in direction perpendicular to the surface. Okay, this is the surface, this is the direction of the eddy. Um, if someone only understands 2D, he will see that the eddy has waves that begin to go in a circle and then disappear. Okay? Because they are no longer... This part, for example, is down and he only sees the surface, remember. So he sees only the first uh, round or something. And then disappear, which is, of course, going downward in 3D term. And from the analogy to our subject. In the same way, according to my assumption, turbulence is a 4D eddy. So we cannot understand it using only 3D. Please note, by saying 4D, uh, I mean fourth spatial dimension. I don't mean time. If you count time as the fourth dimension, then wh whenever I write 4D, fourth dimension, please write, please read it as 5D, okay, fifth dimension. Okay, so we know from Poincaré's con conjecture that the universe has four dimensions. And we are, we are on a, the 3D surface of a 4D ball. This was proved mathematically by the genius Gregory Perelman in the years 2002 to 2003. Okay? Um, Gregory... Um, is very interesting, but we don't have time to talk about him. Um, in the years 2002-2003, how can this how can this be true if we don't see matter appearing and disappearing, like? the water that disappears below the surface of the sea when they go down in the eddy. My answer to this is that ordinary matter cannot get... I'm sorry, I'm just closing the uh, air condition. Okay. How can this be true if we don't see matter appearing and uh, disappearing uh, like the water that disappears below uh, here? Um, like the water that disappears below the surface of the sea when they got down in the eddy. My answer to this is that ordinary matter cannot get inside the fourth dimension. I'll explain why soon. It has to do with the electrical charge of our particles. But energy can enter when it is in the form of magnetic energy. Why am I saying this? What is so special in magnetic energy? Look at other forms of energy. Gravitational field starting at a certain point and works in all directions to infinity. Electrical field, there are two kinds, plus and minus, but each of them starts at a certain point and works in all directions until infinity. On the other hand, the magnetic field starts with a plus and attracted to it is, and sorry, and attached, attached to it, there is always a minus, okay? Which, which doesn't happen in the other types of energy. 
So our intuition tells us that, okay, we have a magnet. Okay, so there is always a plus and a minus magnet. Or any magnet, bar magnet or any magnet. There is always a plus and a minus. I don't remember which side they make uh, red, so I'm not making it red. But uh, there is always a plus and a minus. It, it, we don't have uh, one uh, pole. Never. Okay. So um, our intuition tells us that if these two opposing poles of the magnet are always right next to each other, the most then most of the energy is wasted inside the magnet going from plus to minus inside the magnet where it is closest okay this is close to, the, to this uh, it's not like going all around through here but we know that the magnet doesn't get warm or anything it doesn't get hot this means that our intuition isn't worth anything here because we are used to 3D. What happens in 4D? Let's return to the analogy. Let's say we have an eddy in the water. What do we know from experience happens above the water? Remember, up in, uh, I'm sorry, up is already uh, in one more dimension than the 2D surface of the water. What happens is a matching and flipped eddy in the air, of the air. I'm saying flipped because the air is not sucking into the sea, it's not sucked into the sea, otherwise there would be a lot of bubbles, but is instead going up away from the water level. Okay, so we are talking uh, about uh, like a cyclone or hurricane. Okay, so I'm rising here. Okay, so this is the surface of the water. And above the water, there is a cyclone in the air. Okay, uh, if this was like this, then this is also like this, but uh, going up. Okay? It's not... If we put something here, like uh, in the Wizard of Oz, there is uh, the house. The house is uh, blown upwards. It is not blown downwards. Okay? Things fly in a hurricane or a cyclone. Okay, so this is like a cyclone. Okay, so um, okay, what happens is a matching and flipped eddy, flipped because it's going upwards. I'm saying flipped because the air is not sucked into the sea, otherwise there would be a lot of bubbles, but instead uh, is going up away from the water level. A creature that understands only 2D uh, of the surface uh, of the water, water surface, cannot predict and understand the air eddy. Okay, this is air eddy, this is water eddy. Let's write this. This is water eddy. And this is I'm s I see that I wrote a cyclone without E. I'm sorry, it should be with E in the end. Okay. So this is L Eddie. 
K-cyclone. Okay. So um, a creature that understands only the 2D of the water surface cannot predict and understand the air eddy, the cyclone storm, at all. And uh, its mutual effect on the water, because it's, it only focuses, this creature only focuses on looking at the water surface. Okay, so what's above this, he also can see, and what inside the board, he also cannot see. Okay, please note. Uh, I know that in, real, in a real cyclone uh, storm, the rotation of the air is the cause of the rotation of the water, which is the result, and, and not the other way around. But it's easier for me to explain the, metaf the metaphor this way. Okay, so bear with me. Uh, now back from the analogy to the subject. Let's assume that the Magnetic energy doesn't just go from the plus to side to the minus uh, inside the magnet, but instead, uh, when we are creating a magnet in our 3D world, then an opposite magnet is automatically created in the fourth dimension, like the eddy in the air. Okay, so I'm raising this. So I'm making a, I'm making our magnet in, in blue, it's like the water eddy. Okay, 3D. Magnet. And here is a 4D magnet. Um, okay. So this uh, is uh, made automatically when we make this. When we make one of these, this one is created automatically. Just like when we make this, this one is created automatically. Uh, the magnet in the fourth dimension is not directly above or below uh, Anna and Kata, as uh, Charles Howard Hinton said in 4D. But because of symmetry considerations, it's spread around, okay, around this. I cannot draw this, but it's like spread around this. Um, it's like when somebody is, heaven forbid, electrifies himself from the electric socket. He, he doesn't have to touch both of the plus and minus of the socket in the wall, but it's enough to touch one of them. And the Earth, which is a universal res reserve of electric charge, being uh, that it's the biggest body we have, uh, so the Earth can give and receive as many ele electrons as needed, and it completes the electrification. Okay, so, so the person gets uh, electrified uh, without uh, touching both of them. So here, it, this... Uh, um, I will explain it, it will become clear. So in our world, the positive pole of the magnet throws energy into the fourth dimension. And the magnetic energy goes in the fourth dimension to infinity, not to the negative pole next to it. Okay? Not to the next, sorry, I showed this. Not to the negative pole next to it. Okay, so... In reality, this uh, gives um, a magnetic energy uh, to infinity.
in the fourth dimension. Of course, in all directions. Um, back to the analogy. It's like a buoy that, okay, buoy that flo floats on the water. Let's draw a buoy. Okay, I'm drawing it like a barrel. This is a buoy. How do you write buoy? B U O Y. Okay, it's like a buoy that floats on the water. Back to the analogy. It's like a buoy that oscillates, sways a little up and down on the water. And so it creates, I'm sorry for the noise, and so it creates. Uh, ripples, waves, that spread around it to all sides on the surface of the water forever, to infinity. Okay, forever meaning to infinity. So this buoy, because it's uh, oscillating up and down, makes waves here. And waves here uh, to infinity, forever. Um, back from the analogy to the subject, in the same way the negative pole of the magnet gets energy from the inf infinite infinity of the fourth dimension. Okay, so this gets, like this gives, this gets um, from the fourth uh, dimension. Sorry, fourth. Okay, so uh, in the same way, the negative pole of the magnet gets energy from the infinity of the fourth dimension and not from the positive pole that is right next to it. Okay, back to the analogy. It's like a surface that was at first static, uh, okay, on the water surface, uh, and now because of the waves, coming to it from different direction, it's starting to oscillate a uh, sway up and down. Okay, so imagine this was at first uh, tranquil, uh, without waves, and then there are coming waves from the sides. And giving it energy, so it uh, bobs up and down. So this goes up and down, up and down, up and down, because of the waves. Okay, so this is like this. It got infinity from, uh, I'm sorry, it got energy from in, for the infinity. Uh, okay, so, so far we only created a much more complicated model than what we have today. Uh, and we haven't explained anything extra so that the price of added complication will give us some profit and we will, it will pay off. Okay, we want some uh, predictions uh, that are more uh, easy to understand with the new model or at least uh, that are um, more probable or um, more predictions, something like this. Okay, let's think about the connection between electricity and magnetism. Okay, electricity and magnetism. Okay, the connection between them.
let's think about the connection between electricity and magnetism. We know that when we move an electrical charge inside the conductor, a wire, we get a magnetic field. On the other hand, we, when we move a conductor wire inside the magnetic field, the electric charges inside the conductor move. But why is it so? It's similar to the buoy that we talked about. If the electric particles are the buoy and the magnetic energy is the sea waves, we understand why a movement up and down in the extra dimension is creating a 2D, I'm sorry, in 2D, um, a movement, movement in 2D. Okay, so the extra dimension movement makes a movement in 2D and vice versa, why a movement in 2D uh, is creating a movement of the buoy. Okay, I, I showed it differently, but you understand. The movement of the waves move the buoy in the extra dimension. The movement of the buoy uh, moves the, um, makes the waves in 2D. Okay, uh, so with an extra dimension, we explain the connection between electricity and magnetism. Okay, now uh, let's explain something else. Electromagnetic waves. Okay, so I'll erase this. Okay, now we are talking about electromagnetic waves. And uh, radio waves. Uh, radio waves are a kind of electromagnetic waves. It's another name for the same thing. Sorry. So 28 minutes and we're in uh, half the pages. Okay. Sorry. Uh, now, let's think about electromagnetic waves, radio transmission, for example. Okay, let's write radio transmission. Okay, of course there is also a light, is also electromagnetic wave and a, a gamma waves and a, um, I don't know, infrared and um, okay, many, many kinds of X-ray many kinds of electromagnetic waves, but we are talking now uh, for simplicity about radio transmission. We will, our example would be a radio transmission. When we move the electricity particles inside the conductor back and forth fast, the wire becomes an antenna. Okay, so we have um, a wire Okay, let's draw this in a more uh, um, useful way. Okay, let's say we have a transmitter and a receiver. Okay, this is a transmitter. This 
is the receiver. Um, let's say this is the radio station and this is the radio, um, your personal radio transistor in your home. Okay, that you listen to the news or m music or uh, whatever. So these have um, an antenna that is basically like this. And this has an antenna that is b basically like this. And inside there are um, electrons. Okay, these are the electrons. electrons and here also are electrons because it's metal in, in inside each metal there are uh, electrons that are free to move and this is a metal conductor antenna okay which is metal conductor which has free electrons. Okay, and if the electrons move, we move them forcefully uh, this way and uh, this way and many times, okay? Then this creates, they don't have time to uh, move and this creates um, signals, okay? There are signals, let's throw them in, uh, in this color, okay, that are uh, going uh, in the air and these signals come to this transmitter and they are moving these uh, electrons in the same way back and forth okay here and here and here and this uh, machine knows how to uh, translate this uh, electric current, okay, electrons that move are el electric current, and this uh, radio, uh, personal radio in our uh, bedroom or in our living room knows how to make uh, from this uh, the, the music or whatever it this uh, broadcast. Okay, so uh, now let's think of a uh, about electromagnetic waves, radio transmission for example. When we move the electricity particles inside the conductor back and forth fast, the wire becomes an antenna. Uh, the direction of the magnetic field doesn't have enough time to turn over and radio waves are created. In the opposite direction, when radio waves when radio waves reach another conductor, another antenna, they move the electric particles inside that, uh, inside that conductor back and forth uh, and we can s listen to what was broadcast to us, for us. Sorry. Uh, what is the analogy of radio waves in our marine metaphor? Okay, in the common explanation, in the wrong explanation today, in the common explanation, the radio waves movement are similar to the following air and water movement. Okay, so this is now the wrong explanation. Common. Okay, wrong. Explanation. Uh, is this. Um, the movement of the water, like there is a movement of water, okay, and some of the water get pushed, okay, because they don't have time to move over, so they are getting pushed away, okay, and uh, from these pushes, if they are also fast, then there are small pushes that are going away from this and away from this okay and these are these uh, alternating directions are these uh, alternating directions of uh, electric field magnetic field electric field magnetic field okay 
So, I'm reading to you. Uh, in the common explanation, the radio waves movement are similar to the following air and water movement. Suppose there is water moving in the direction from north to south over a lake. What will happen to the water? The water will form waves which also move from north to south. Now, as a result of the flowing of water from north to, north to south, a little water which had no time to move are pushed to the sides, towards east and towards west. What is this small amount of water movement causing? A little movement of air above them, also in the direction to the east and to the west. Okay, so let's draw this in proper colors. So after water are pushed, then also air is following the movement of the water. Okay? I'm drawing just one, not to confuse you. Okay, so um, a little movement of air above them, also in the direction of east and to the, w to the east and to the west. The little movements eastward and westward will create even smaller movements um, north and south of their own, and so on. Length and breadth. The air and water affect one another each time in 90 degrees angle to the original movement. Okay, so from these movements of the air, then other movements of water are uh, made. Okay? Also upwards, but anyway, one time it's this way, one time it's this way, and then it's a uh, alt um, flipping, okay, from electric field to magnetic field and so on. Okay, this is the common uh, wrong explanation. We know that the electrical and magnetic field that alternately create each other in radio transmission are also perpendicular to each other. As we understand the metaphor, this mechanism loses energy, decays very fast, and becomes smaller and smaller movements. Let's think of another mechanism for radio transmission. Okay, so this doesn't make sense. Let's think of something else. Suppose we have an eddy, swirl, in the air. Okay, so we have, like before, uh, an eddy. Okay, this is the surface of the water. Okay, this is my explanation. Okay, which is right. Okay, so there is an eddy above the water. Let's say uh, like this. Okay, let's say... Um, okay, let's make it uh, uh, this way. Okay, so this is the eddy above the water of the air. And um, suppose we have an eddy swirl in the air that creates an eddy swirl in the water. Okay, so we have uh, this goes around, so this also goes around. Um, suppose we have an eddy swirl in the air that creates an eddy swirl in the water. Let's say we have another eddy in the air created not far away from there, which rotates in the opposite direction, and that neighbor eddy also creates an eddy in the water, a neighbor eddy water in that, in that opposite direction. Okay, so we have another pair 
like this was uh, in this way and this was in this way. And it makes uh, a partner. Uh, if this was like this, then this was this goes like this. Okay, so they are uh, like a mirror image. Let's say the first pair of air and water eddies rotate clockwise, and the second pair of eddies air and water are rotating counterclockwise. If the two eddies in the water come close to one another, they can connect. Okay, these two can connect. Uh, you can try this with the palms of your hands. Okay, so I'm just showing you first, like this one uh, goes uh, which like this. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, and coming towards this one and this one which is uh, clockwise, is coming close to this one, and they connect, they become um, one. Okay? You see they are rotating in, the simi in a similar uh, direction. You can try this with the palms of your hands. Hold your hands a little bent in front of your chest. Okay, I'll put it here. In front of your chest. Um, with the palms facing downwards. Now rotate your palms in circles, as if you are a DJ, disc jockey. Uh, one hand in one direction, let's say the right hand clockwise, and the other hand in the opposite direction, let's say your left hand in the counterclockwise direction. Okay? Your two palms are the two eddies inside the water. Now continue, sorry, I need to uh, read the next page, page 4. Continue to rotate your hands and at the same time slowly turn, uh, turn them towards each other. Okay? As if you want to clap your hands. So you will see that the eddies support each other and strengthen each other. Okay? They are moving the same. They, they connect it. Um, if the air neighboring air eddies connect between the same pair, the same pairs that we connect that were connected in the water, then we didn't do anything. We just formed a ring. So, if we have a lot of this, they are, they are just a lot of separate rings. Uh, but what if the pairs of air eddies and water eddies connect alternately. Then it looks like a needle that is pulled, uh, that pulled a thread in warp and weft form. Okay, warp and weft. Okay, so needle, warp, and weft. Okay, like this. When you have a fabric and you take the needle and you put it inside and take it from this way and this way, okay, up and down, up and down, like that. So, um, Uh, then it looks like a needle that pulled a thread in warp and weft form. One time above the fabric and the next time below the fabric and the thread is continuous, uh, which means the eddy continues and supports itself from one end all the way to the other end, which can be very far. Okay, so basically it's like this. 
Uh, I'm erasing the common explanation, which is wrong. Okay, because it loses energy, it doesn't make sense. So imagine this is very far, and we have um, here another um, eddy, air eddy that connects to this, and here another water, and here another eddy that goes to here, and another that comes from here. Okay, and they are like, uh, okay, this one uh, went this way, so this one goes this way, and here this went in counterclockwise, so this goes uh, counterclockwise. Okay, so we have a continuous thread, it's like the a thread that the needle uh, 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 waves, weaves. It's like going downwards and upwards and downwards and upwards and downwards and upwards and they strengthen each other. They support each other. They give energy to each other. So it's uh, stable. So I, th I think this kind of mechanism it is much more stable and this creates radio broadcasts. The fields are not per perpendicular to one another in 3D, but in 4D. Uh, why don't we see continuous storm like this in the oceans that looks like a snake that goes above the water and below the water, back and forth? Because they will suck energy from one another, because there is not enough separation between them. Okay, this is not separating enough, the surface water. Um, because they suck energy from one another, because there is not enough separation between them. Before you turn your palms one towards one another, like you want to clap, if the hands of the DJ are rotating each one, sorry, on another record, one hand clockwise and the other hand counterclockwise, the air or the water between the hands will not know where to go and so the hands will disturb one another. As opposed to this, uh, the fourth dimension is creating the necessary separation, okay, so that the hands will not interrupt one another. The electrical charge cannot pass. I will soon explain why. Because of the random movement of the electron, which is the result of the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Uh, okay, so the electric charge cannot pass the barrier to the fourth dimension, but the magnetic force of the mirror world does work in the fourth dimension and what goes back and forth is, in fact, a, a CAD magnetic force of 3D in, into the air eddy, magnetic force in the mirror uh, 4D. When there is no movement of the buoy, electrical charge, okay, if there is a buoy here, uh, it doesn't move. Uh, electrical charge, unless we run into a buoy again, the next antenna. Okay, I erased the antennas, but the antennas are actually the buoy. Okay, but until we hit another uh, buoy, another antenna, we don't need the buoy. Okay, we don't need electrons in the middle here and here and here, like the common wrong explanation. This also explains why we can, we can uh, transmit radio waves in vacuum, because there is no need in electrons uh, there is no need for electrical particles. The current, uh, the one we use now, theory, the current theory, doesn't explain this. Because even if we created a magnetic field, how do we, further down the road,
create an electric field if we don't have electrical particles. Okay, so it's like this is a problem of the current uh, method, the, the method uh, that they explain this now, which is wrong. Um, how, how do we get uh, electrons in the vacuum that they need to move in order to make a new uh, field? Okay. So here we continue without any buoys, without any electrons. Um, okay. Okay, uh, so this by now is a decent profit uh, that we get from the new theory. We explain the connection between electricity and magnetism using the fourth dimension. And we explained radio waves using the fourth dimension. Now let's explain something a lot cooler, which is turbulence. First, first, w uh, sorry. First of all, we notice that energy lines are clean and smooth, except in situations of chaos, like the three-body problem, which we might explain later. Actually, we explained uh, explained it in a in a previous lecture, in another invention of mine. Uh, okay, so. The three-body problem, I think you know what it is because you've seen the other uh, inventions. But normally, they are clean and smooth. Okay, but if you don't remember, it's like the three-body problem. It's like uh, Earth and uh, the Moon and the Sun, and they all uh, uh, attract each other, and it's uh, chaotic, chaotic, and you cannot uh, know exactly uh, what will happen in three-body problem. If there is a two-body problem, it's easy since Newton. It, but uh, since Poincaré, in a three-body problem, it's very chaotic. Okay. But normally, they are clean and smooth. So I'm reading again. 52 minutes. I really need to hurry. So I will read it quickly. Um, now let's ex explain something a lot cooler, which is turbulence. First of all, we notice that energy lines are clean and smooth except in situations of chaos, like the three-body problem, which we might explain later. But normally they are clean and smooth, and turbulence is created where there is a matter, like in a river flowing, water particles, or in air flow, air particles, okay? because the particles contain electrical charge. So now, with the new theory, we understand the turbulence doesn't happen with just any matter particles, but with the ones who have within them electrical charges. The electrical charges are balanced because within each atom or molecule there is already an ele electrical balance between protons and electrons, but it is important that the atoms or molecules have within them electrical subparticles. Okay, so when they move, they, make, they behave like uh, the, the buoy or the antenna. Okay, so how is turbulence created? Okay, how is turbulence? Uh, created. Um, just drinking a little and I will read it fast. Okay, um, sorry. We are going back to our marine metaphor. Let's say we have a smooth laminar flow of water. But the water particles have a tiny random motion because of the uncertainty principle. Otherwise, we would know exactly where, where they are and, and uh, the speed, the momentum. So we can compare this to a small fish 
that swims with the water but also flipping their fins and create random waves in different directions. If only the water world existed, then even if the effect of the small fish would combine initially uh, to the beginning of a small eddy, their, their eddy of the fish uh, would soon grow weak because there isn't anything that will hold and sustain this random effect of the small fish. But now the fourth dimension comes into play. Remember that when there is an eddy inside the water, there is a parallel eddy in the air, the fourth dimension. And there is a certain persistence of its own. And there, it has a certain persistence of its own. So in time, uh, there forms uh, in the smooth current tiny eddies that last longer than a split of a second. Sorry, some of them last long enough to join between them into bigger eddies. This is what we see in turbulence. In my opinion, if we will make a flow of particles that don't have within them little fish, meaning that they don't have electrical charge inside them, like neutrons, then we will see that their flow isn't causing turbulence. This will be the parallel of the superconductor of electrical energy, but here uh, it's mechanical energy. This is unfortunately only theoretical, because outside the nucle nucleus uh, of the atom, the neutron decays in beta decay and becomes a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. Okay, so in Wikipedia you can see free neutron decay. But maybe there is a kind of par particle which is neutral and doesn't disintegrate. And then we can use it as a perfect hydraulic liquid that can operate a hydraulic press without any resistance of its own or the perfect pneumatic gas that can pass huge distances, for example, in a pneumatic tube. What is even cooler is that, is that in my opinion, uh, these materials which don't have electrical inner parts that move, uh, sorry, uh, open parenthesis, right, Inside the neutron lie hidden the proton and the electron, but they don't move when they are inside the neutron. Close parenthesis. Okay, so I'm reading this again. What is even cooler is that, in my opinion, these materials which don't have electrical inner parts that move, so they, uh, as opposed to us, can enter the fourth dimension, even though they are metal. Okay, so we can't, because we have a... Uh, electrical charges, but they can. Uh, so, why don't we see neutrons? Okay, neutrons. So, why don't we see neutrons when they disappear into the fourth dimension and we don't see neutrons uh, appearing out of the blue, out of thin air, from the fourth dimension. Well, guess what? We do see such a thing. Okay, we, we have this. Neutron lifetime puzzle. Okay, so what about neutrons? Neutrons lifetime puzzle. Okay, here I'm giving you a few links to nature.com article, to quantummagazine.org, neutron lifetime puzzle depends but no dark matter seen. Uh, to sciencemag.org, uh, content something, 
to NS, nist.gov, news, news events, news, something from 2014, towards new precision measuring neutron lifetime. Okay, so there are a lot of links about the neutron lifetime puzzle, which you can also see. Um, I didn't give you a link to Wikipedia, but I guess you can also see it in Wikipedia. And I'll give you all the links in the video description. What time is it? Okay, one hour. We need to really, really hurry. There is a something called neutron lifetime puzzle or neutron half-life discrepancy, which says that the life expectancy of the neutron is different in eight seconds. Okay, eight seconds depending on how you measure it. My guess is that one of the methods create a disturbance in the passage to the fourth dimension, and this is where the difference comes from. When you put neutrons in a bottle and count them, neutrons leave 14 point, uh, not point, uh, column, uh, 39 minutes. Okay, this is in the bottle. And um, when you pass them in a ray tube, possibly something like a Crookes tube, they leave 14 per uh, column, uh, 48 minutes. Okay, this is in a um, ray tube. So you see the difference, it's uh, um, 8 seconds, I think it's a little more, but never mind, 8 or 9 seconds, uh, which means 8 seconds longer. So I think that what happens is that the electrical voltage inside the tube affects how much the neutrinos, I'm sorry, the neutrons can pass to and from the fourth dimension. In, this met in the metaphor, uh, they can be, for example, like the temperature of the water affects the chance that a cyclone storm will, ha will happen. So if someone is limited to the surface of the water, it will appear to him that there is more water uh, when there is no storm, because he doesn't see the water spray in the air. Every water that comes up, he doesn't see. So, if we have voltage in the ray tube, uh, fewer neutrons can get lost to the fourth dimension, so we have more neutrons. So, the scientists think that the neutrons live for a longer time, because they exist in our 3D more. Okay, what does the fourth dimension look like? So, we'll finish with thinking, what does the fourth dimension look like? At the very least, there is a magnetosphere of a whole lot of things that we have here in 3D. Okay, so in Wikipedia, magnetosphere. Um, but at the very most, there are things there like neutron stars, or if these don't last long enough, then neutrino stars, or other particles which are neutral and more stable and maybe even living creatures that live there and are made of the same material. Okay, so uh, that was my invention, and I'll see you in my next invention. I hope it was clear, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.